Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our first uh, the North England Packaging webinar. We'll just do a little bit of a preamble as we're waiting the last few people to join. Um, firstly, I'd like to ask if you could all put your microphones on mute, please. If you would like to send any questions through, we'll answer those at the end of all the sessions. And I'd like to say at this just as a start, big thank you to the East Midland Society and particularly Liam and um, Ian who help us set this up. Liam will be collating the questions and passing them on to the uh, speakers. So if you have a question for a speaker, could you actually just put in the question who it's for? Uh, Liam, you should see has just popped up the uh, the questions box. So thank you all for joining. Um, we've got three very interesting speakers today and our first speaker is Olga Munro, who's the head of the Retail Institute at Leeds Beckett. Olga, would you like to take over the screen? Hi, hello everyone. Yes, would you like me to put my presentation on already or? Yes, please. OK, so I will do that. Uh, can you see it? Yes, and sorry, one final bit of admin. This um, is being recorded for anyone who would like to see it later, and we will make the presentations available after the event. Right, thank you, Olga, over to you. Wonderful. Well, uh, good uh, afternoon, everybody, and, uh, and welcome. It's a real pleasure to be joining the Northern Packaging Society today. Uh, what I will be uh, talking to you today briefly is Consumer Trends for 2021. And as you can imagine, um, any uh, trends that are predicted at the times of the global crisis do come with a caveat. But I will lead you and guide you through that as we speak. But before I get on to that, I would just like to very briefly introduce uh, who we are. Um, Retail Institute is an academic centre based at Leeds Beckett University, but we have been working very closely with the uh, retail and packaging supply chain uh, for over 20 years now. Uh, some of our key themes are, are very much related to, to your interests as well. We want to understand the behaviour of a consumer, which, as you know, is ever changing. And we also are interested in the role of packaging in the future, uh, specifically when it comes to innovation and sustainability in this um, segment. So coming on to the top five consumer trends for this year, um, I would say one of them uh, that you see centrally is more important than the others, but I'll, I'll come on to all of them um, in a second. So online and offline is a, uh, is a trend that looks at how our new lifestyle habits um, have been shaped during the lockdown period globally and how that contributed to something that we call digital acceleration. Taking care is self-explanatory, I suppose. This is about your physical and mental well-being. The great outdoors is one of the trends we've picked uh, because it, it, it's an emerging and possibly persistent uh, lifestyle change uh, that is likely to stay with us. Uh, going local uh, is about this restricted radius of movement um, that came with some opportunities to local uh, players uh, or global players like Amazon, if you like, but uh, ultimately it contributes to new and emerging and possibly disruptive business models. Now, the final, but perhaps the biggest theme, and one that really links into what packaging, Northern Packaging Society wanted to talk about today, is this progression of an ethical and environmental consumer, which we have called reshaping the world. So coming on to the offline, on, on, um, online and offline trend. So all of us, uh, as I can see from, from the videos as well, we are working uh, remotely uh, thing, um, you know, uh, working in the offices might be actually permanently a thing of the past. We have noticed that there's a lot of new roles um, uh, being advertised uh, with flexible working criteria, meaning that those uh, flexible working patterns and working from home are be becoming um, something that is written into employment contracts. You will already know as well that the commercial property market has uh, dropped by 20 and 30 percent in, in terms of office um, rentals and employers are really looking that uh, various savings brought to them by this new way of, um, of, of um, getting the employees engaged from their homes. The cost of utilities, cleaning up premises, uh, corporate hospitality, um, travel, 
um, all those things really incentivize employers to non-office based working. Um, so the independent actually um, mentioned that as many as 57% of business owners see uh, that, that uh, remote working practices going forward are here to stay. And one of the big implications that I'll pick up on um, later on as well is around the retail mix in the city centres and, for example, food to go offer that might impact on, um, on yourselves too. Now, digital acceleration is probably something you've already observed yourself as well. Um, businesses that have been really cashing in on the periods of lockdown, as, as you would expect, those global tech giants. So we've got Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Google, um, you know, followed by entertainment services like um, Netflix, who uh, I believe last year they've reached about 200 million new subscribers. So this digital acceleration really means that we are getting used to consuming services normally reserved for the offline world, such as exercising, entertainment and socialising. But really one of the most critical areas for you in this space is the growth of grocery, grocery e-commerce. And you, will, uh, you may know this, that in, in the previous years, in the two or three years going back, we've always been reporting of the um, e-commerce um, grocery as something that has about 20, 30 percent of market share. Now, last year it has reached 70% of market share, with the retail sales of um, uh, a value of food alone at 108% increase. So it's hugely impactful. Now, there are obviously all those consumer barriers around uh, that we had before around purchasing of your food online. Things like uh, perceptions around not being able to pick your meat or vegetables and see them in the retail bricks and mortar environment fears over safety of online payments, you know, labour around registrations on the website. So there's been a huge shift actually in, in um, consumers kind of battling through these little obstacles when the needs was a must and transition into those new habits of e-commerce. And what we would say, we know from research that a new habit only needs to kind of embed with a person for about seven times to actually embed itself in their lives permanently. So I'm not saying the percentage will be as high as is, is now. I'm sure people still use the bricks and mortar for more social um, kind of aspects uh, and browsing, um, and it will definitely be important, but that investment that retailers made um, to upgrade their operations in that space, uh, in the virtual space, is likely to uh, grow. Uh, now, this retail transition um, that I've mentioned in the reflective working, this is really about the retail mix in the city centres. The dynamic food to go market has been really affected by a lack of lunchtime trade, a lack of commuter trade. Uh, so I would see that there might be a permanent, maybe not as dramatic as now, but a definitely dramatic um, and um, semi dramatic and permanent change that we would expect in this space. Taking care. Um, so in food consumption, we observed a shift in consumer behaviour patterns towards well-being. We are spending obviously more time at home, uh, we've got more health concerns, we've got also economical restraints, so budgetary um, kind of uh, challenges. Uh, and this combination of budget um, and, and time really uh, has transferred really well into us uh, cooking from scratch and contributed to the decline in a ready meals category as well which it has been already declining before the crisis, but it has further declined. On the flip side of that, we see um, that we are deprived of those culinary experiences and retailers and, and some brands and especially some restaurants are venturing into this space and offering meal, meal kits, which um, becoming um, are, um, are popular. And also we see retailers continuing with uh, themes that they've been really had before the pandemic as well, Tesco, for example, with great nights in, so offering some kind of provision for us to, to maybe go, go a bit more adventurous at home. Now, personal care is another really interesting one uh, because we are, uh, with us spending more time um, at home, also means that we have a simplified way of living. So you maybe would have seen BBC reporting how uh, sales of lipsticks have nearly completely come to a halt. Uh, it's not as bad as it seems, because, but we have observed a decline in personal premium and luxury goods of about 23% in 2020. Uh, so those small luxuries in um, sales of makeup or fragrances and deodorants, interestingly, uh, that was some, something that somebody picked up on that. We see uh, 
less concerned with our smell when we don't socialize as much as we used to. Uh, I'm sure that will, of course, is a temporary thing. Uh, but um, in terms of where we are now, still in lockdown, those um, the well-being products that we can apply at home, so skin and healthcare, self-grooming and pampering products are still doing very well. Now, thriftiness is something that we would expect to actually last um, past the, the lockdown and restriction periods. 64% of consumers have set up budgets they try to stick to and are cutting down on non-essential. So this is this uh, non-discretionary spending. So we be becoming more creative and thriftier and trying that simplified lifestyle that really goes well with this ethical uh, consumer mindset, really we see gaining uh, even more traction. So we would expect people to remain careful spenders throughout the year. And uh, health apps is another one. You might be surprised I'm talking to the packaging group about health apps, but um, this social isolation and economic hardship really created a perfect storm in, in terms of mental health problems. So Mental reported that 51% of consumers have uh, used a health app to manage the well-being. Uh, so there's a big shift in, um, in profits for those meta companies, particularly in terms of care delivery in areas of chronic pain of, of, of mental health. And Forbes has been reporting that we see an increase in, in VR and augmented reality for those particular segments. Now, I know that augmented reality has been really, um, you know, a, a flop in packaging, if you like. It's not really taken off uh, to any great extent, but perhaps there's an opportunity for technology and packaging uh, becoming um, a conduit uh, for, uh, for some of those um, uh, well-being behaviours. Going local is about uh, this reignited um, sense of community that we're experiencing. So we've got many uh, local initiatives and local businesses looking at how to tackle things like social isolation. So, but also what is more important apart from those voluntary activities that we see um, a different um, set up of expectations from consumers about how the goods are delivered to the home at any time with some of the basic need stores actually be being within a short 15 minute radius from home. And also, who picked up on that? Some of the brands picked up on that. Um, and for, for anybody who really relies on footfall and commuters traffic to gain visibility for the products, really may have a, a challenge on their hands. Another thing is that those home deliveries really mean that uh, moment of truth, that third moment of truth really, uh, is when your cardboard box arrives at your door, whether that's for grocery or for anything else you've ordered, that's really an engagement with brand values. And to pick up on that, uh, I think the e-commerce packaging is very, at the moment, underused by brands. And there's a real opportunity for packaging to step in and perhaps create an opportunity for big players to utilise the medium of pack to convey the brand values or maybe even environmental values that lead into that. And of course, that brand visibility could um, as well um, benefit from, from packaging as medium, um, conveying those messages. Now, togetherness is a trend that, um, sub-trend if you like, that some of the retailers really picked up on. Um, so Asda here in my local regional Leeds uh, have uh, created a collaboration with a local food bank to help uh, donate food to the most vulnerable in the society. But Morrison's actually taken a very different approach to this local trend and they launched a local food makers campaign, which means that they promote regional products in their stores. So um, the last example I'm going to give you is really about disruptors, disruptors uh, in this space. Um, there's been companies coming forward with their local produce offerings. Uh, for example, in where I am, I had a company called Modern Milkman, um, pretty much like traditional, um, if you like, Milkman electric cart with locally sourced, um, um, you know, the farm dairy, but it's not just dairy, it's also orange juices like they used to be, I suppose. Um, there's also uh, groceries that you can get delivered and it has such a great environmental appeal, right? You've got cut carbon footprint, you've got ethically and locally sourced produce uh, without the big brands that I often uh, perceived as the, as the um, kind of biggest polluters as well. Um, so it's really back to basics. And of course, all this is operated from the convenience of my own phone. I don't have to call anybody. Uh, there's no social interruption, uh, interruption and interaction uh, required. Um, so this, this, this is quite attractive. And of course, uh, companies uh, that offer butchery or, or fisheries uh, industries, they also have been slowly coming in this space and 
to local uh, neighborhoods. And let's not forget that Amazon is also a big disruptor. Now, the next um, kind of trend I'm going to cover really quickly because it's, it's less relevant than the last one. But the great outdoors, we've really been embracing uh, the world around us because we really didn't have a choice. But 40% of US consumers are stating that when it comes to the recreational activities, they expect to continue utilizing the parks and public land after the crisis, purely because of the thriftiness and the economic concerns around paying for gym memberships and things. When it comes to pets at home, um, um, subtrend, um, you know, the uh, the lockdown have been really made for puppies. I'm, I'm, I'm a, one of those people that um, definitely uh, gone that way. Uh, but it, when it comes to the sales, the retailer Pets at Home reported sales last year, uh, a raise of 5%, uh, over 5%, and going up to 12% in bricks and mortar during summer alone. But really, it's the e-commerce that had a really staggering growth of 65%. And the pet industry is market is really predicted to thrive in 2021. So if you are producing those pouches for that particular product um, category segment that you might be in for a win. Uh, outdoor exercise, I won't dwell on this actually uh, too much. I'm just going to say that UK reported 63% increase in bike sales last year. But again, I want to come back to this online offline trend. If you've been, if you've purchased Peloton or if you are a user uh, of, uh, of similar system, uh, they have doubled uh, the sales uh, uh, specifically for exercising um, uh, in 2020. Uh, so they are something about 1.8 billion, I believe, in sales at the moment. So staycation is another one, uh, perhaps less relevant for you, but uh, we would expect that with the cost of travel abroad and the risks and the tests and all that involved, that we may expect that the sales of camping equipment, Wellingtons, other outdoor fitness gear uh, might be what we see this summer on the right. But the most really important uh, trend as I come in uh, overall onto my time, and I do apologize, it will take me three minutes more, uh, is this trend around reshaping the world. And we've noticed that consumers have been very much during lockdowns really involved in social um, and environmental justice movements. So you would see things like Black Lives Matter really gaining traction, uh, consumers are increasingly deciding to buy from brands that do environmental and social good. However, this is really, um, in a sense, 